for somebody to feel like that they can get away with riding down Broadway and shooting is ridiculous. I know that. And happening today, right now at 5, an urgent plea for action tonight from Metro Council members and the community after a deadly shooting after a West Louisville nightclub one week ago. Now an LMPD lieutenant is making a promise to the people of West Louisville that there will be more police patrols to protect businesses in the late night hours. It's our top story here at 5. I'm Shay McAllister. And I'm Doug Prophet. The message came at a news conference in front of the temporarily closed H2O lounge where eight people were shot, one of them killed last weekend. Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton were there. Isaiah, certainly some strong words we're hearing right there from community leaders today. Well, Doug, we did loud and clear. They say they're sick of the violence and want to be able to run their businesses without fear of a shooting, a shooting breaking out near them at any given time. It's why Councilwoman Tammy Hawkins tells us she wants LMPD to have a bigger presence in West Louisville, specifically between the hours of 10 p.m and 3 a.m. before people get hurt. It's concerning to me. Not just as public safety chair, but just as a resident. That we don't have the same equitable presence of LMPD in these areas around the hours of 10 to 3. Ms. Hawkins, I've heard your concerns and we'll work. We will address them, okay? okay. I promise you that uh, <laughs> the leadership here will ensure that we're doing better, okay? okay. There's Thank shortcomings. You. I'm aware of that. I promise you we'll do the best we can to improve it. Come down here. PD Lieutenant Mason Brown there assuring the community they will see an uptick in regular patrols in neighborhoods like Russell. I asked him, does he promise that will happen? And he answered me, told me yes. He did note, though, they remain hundreds of officers short. Meanwhile, council members also put the responsibility on the community too, asking anyone who witnessed the mass shooting at H2O last weekend to step forward and provide information to detectives. As of today, guys, no arrests have been made in the case. Doug Shea. Isaiah, thank you. Well, this week, the homicide unit released these photographs of what is believed to be the suspect driving away after the shooting in this SUV right outside Club H2O. It's a light brown or golden color SUV and dated between 2007 and 2014. Police say that the Chevy Tahoe would have bullet holes in the front. Again, if you have any information, you're urged to call the anonymous tip line at 574 LMPD. Happy Friday, Kentuckiana. You made it to the end of the week and you sure had a steamy ending here. <laughs> Those are great words to hear. Happy Friday for sure. And I tell you what, it started off really nice today and then suddenly midday you could feel it. Something happened. What, what about it, Colleen? Uh, the humidity happened. Yeah, it is a great day still. It is a little hot, so if you can find a park that's in the shade, that is definitely recommended. Right now we're at 92 degrees, 92 in Fort Knox, 90 over at Bowman, and it feels almost like 100. In fact, we just got to a heat index of 101 in Bardstown. So make sure you're staying hydrated and keep your eye on your kids and pets, especially if they're playing outside for a long period of time. My dog was outside for 10 minutes and all he did was sunbathe and he was panting. So it is definitely a hot forecast out there and it's going to be another hot day tomorrow. But Sunday that is going to be a perfect summer setup. Can't wait to tell you about it. It is going to feel muggy overnight tonight. In comparison, we were in the 60s this morning. We have a low of 79 degrees here in Louisville. We have our next system pushing through throughout the afternoon tomorrow. It will bring some spotty storms, not going to be widespread, but this is a classic summertime setup. So that low pressure is all the way in the northern plains. That front is still going to drift drift over our areas throughout the day on Saturday. One or two thunderstorms could pop up right along it. I will show you that updated forecast model coming up. Doug Shea. All right, Colleen, thank you very much. Well, on this Friday, it was graduation day. Louisville Metro Department of Corrections has a new class of officers to man the jail. Academy class 140 graduated today. After years of struggling with staff shortages and inmate safety, the Louisville jail is seeing some improvements and they've been slowly uh, whittling away at the staffing issues. Collins, Jerry Collins, the, the director of the jail, encouraged the officers for choosing a path of public service. Some people will dislike you for what you represent. They will challenge your professionalism. Be professional anyway. They will challenge your integrity. Show integrity anyway. 
They will challenge your compassion. Be compassionate anyway. So a big graduating class today, ACLU and the, the director, Jerry Collins, have been working closely to add additional educational programs for the inmates. And city leaders hope to boost development in Louisville with a new partnership. Mayor Craig Greenberg announced the next steps toward the creation of the Louisville Economic Development Alliance today. The nonprofit will lead business attractions, expansion efforts, develop new funding tools for small businesses, and focus on investments from public and private entities. The mayor said he met with about 80 people from the city on this, business leaders, labor activists, and investors. We listened to these folks and got great feedback. And together, we created a new plan the Growing Louisville Together plan that some of my colleagues with me here today work so hard on listening to members of the community and putting in place a detailed economic development action plan. The Alliance will be led by a more than 30 member board and we've already seen some of the action items detailed in the plan coming to fruition. That includes investments in parks and community centers and securing historic investments in downtown projects like the Belvedere, Louisville Gardens and the Community Care Campus. Now to that major Supreme Court decision, justices ruled that federal prosecutors overreached when they charged hundreds of people who rioted on January 6th at the U.S. Capitol with obstruction. As you know, many people from Kentucky were there also charged. It means many of the charges could now be dropped and it raises questions about the charges facing Donald Trump as well. Here's ABC's M. Wynn at the U.S. Supreme Court to explain this new ruling. The case was brought by former Pennsylvania police officer Joseph Fisher, who entered the Capitol on January 6th and was charged with obstruction of an official proceeding. In the consequential 6-3 to three decision, justices limiting what type of charges can be brought against January 6th defendants, specifically the obstruction statute used by federal prosecutors under a 2002 financial crimes law applying to evidence tampering. There needs to be, again, a connection to the destruction of records and documents, not just, you know, blocking a proceeding. In an unusual ideological alliance, conservative justice Amy Coney Barrett joined two liberal justices, Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan, in dissenting. Writing statutes often go further than the problem that inspired them. This decision undercuts hundreds of the Justice Department's charges against pro-Trump rioters who physically tried to stop Congress from certifying the 2020 election results. The former president taking to social media today to call this decision a massive victory for J6 political prisoners. Attorney General Merrick Garland says the ruling will not impact the vast majority of 1,400 January 6 related criminal cases, and he will continue to use all available tools to hold accountable those criminally responsible. So these people, uh, if this is their only charge, I think they're going to sort of be free of the criminal justice system. Two of the four counts against Donald Trump are under this particular law. We'll learn the fate of that election interference case here at the Supreme Court on Monday. Justices set to rule whether a former president has absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts taken while in office. M. Wynn, ABC News at the Supreme Court. Well, today the U.S. Supreme Court sided with an Oregon town which bans people from sleeping outdoors despite having no available shelters. Kentucky passed a similar law making camping outdoors on public land illegal. They ruled six to three, the uh, Supreme Court deciding that fining the homeless does not qualify as cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. Like I foresaw that this was this was coming our way. Um, I'm disappointed because it really isn't going to address our root causes of homelessness. It's not going to move people towards housing. It's really a punitive measure that has no basis in fact or um, efficacy of like moving people back towards housing. For the homeless there speaking in Louisville today, State Representative Jared Bauman was a sponsor behind Kentucky's camping ban. He said in part, the opinion also highlights how crucial it is that homeless individuals participate in such services. Further, the opinion recognizes that we can't ignore the public safety and private property interests involved in this complex issue. Today, Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey shared his wife has died in a social media post. He said his high school sweetheart of 35 years went to heaven. Massey and his wife Rhonda have four children together. He did go on to thank everyone for their prayers during this difficult time. Right.